What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're talking about the latest release of Enscape and that is Enscape 3.3 and also recently there was a new service pack which is important for Revit users because it allows you to use Enscape in the latest version of Revit which is Revit 2023 and that's what I'm going to be using in today's video. Uh, now when it comes to these new features, uh, the, the ones that I'm going to be talking about, uh, something that that's, I guess, most impressive to me uh, is the site context, uh, which is amazing. It allows you to load in pretty much any site on Earth <laughs> into uh, into Enscape and then use it as the context for your uh, for your project, which is really cool. Also, we're going to be talking about the alpha channel export. We're going to be talking about the pin on top option, uh, the material override, uh, the camera synchronization, uh, which is kind of a new Revit feature, a, a, some new solutions in terms of uh, camera synchronization, uh, also uh, the transparent materials and reflections, and finally some new educational assets. So I'm just going to be covering all of this in today's video. And of course, if you want to check out Enscape, I'm going to be including a link just below this video in the description, and then also up in the cards above. So without any further ado, let's jump straight straight into Revit and then Enscape. And I actually already have Enscape running, so I'm just going to bring up that window here. And here we have that same office building in Enscape. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be showing you the site context first. So here up uh, up on this little ribbon, uh, we have this little icon that looks like uh, a few buildings. It's called site context. You can use the shortcut O. Uh, and then if I click here, uh, you will see that we get this little panel. And then on the bottom, we have add site context. Now, once I click on this, it's going to open up the site context dialog. And here you can, uh, you can specify the location, it's set to Boston here. Uh, but I'm just going to click here on the address. And I'm just going to type in Belgrade because that's my hometown. And then let's go to Belgrade and place our building there. So I've already picked out the location here. So what you can do is I can just take this little kind of uh, pin and place it where kind of essentially where I want to have the building. Uh, you don't have to do it perfect right out of the box. You can modify it later on. So I'm just going to place it here. And then you have an option here to fit to location, which when you click, it's just going to bring this window and kind of center it around your location. Uh, now, when it comes to this little window, you can see that if I come off here to the sides, I can actually stretch it in or out. And you will see that we have these numbers on bottom and off to the side uh, where we can basically see how large this window is. Uh, now, in terms of the dimensions, you can actually have it anywhere from 100 uh, by 100 meters all the way up to uh, 10,000 by 10,000 meters. So you can actually have a fairly large site. So in this case, I want to grab something like, I don't know, something like this, let's say. And once you're happy with the kind of the, the area that you have selected, the next step is to go here to site context data and just take a look at all of the options that you have. Uh, we can activate buildings and landmarks, streets and sidewalks and topography. Now I have them all checked on because I want all of them. So I'm just going to leave it as is and then click on import. So it's just going to start importing that site uh, context data into Enscape. Uh, now, also something important to mention here uh, is that this site context data, uh, this is going to work inside of Enscape. The geometry is going to be inside of Enscape, but it's not going to be kind of transferred uh, to Revit or uh, the many other software that you might be using. And here we go. So as you can see, we have our building and we have our site context and there's quite a bit of context. We have the roads, we have the buildings. And uh, by the way, as I said, I'm, I'm from uh, Belgrade, Serbia, which 
isn't i guess the it's not a very popular uh, area or destination but we still have very decent uh, site context for uh, this particular city so uh, I, i'm guessing that in uh, kind of larger cities it's going to work a little, you're going to have more data but perhaps it works everywhere perfectly i don't know it, it it does seem to work really really great regardless of the location that you pick which is really impressive and as you can see it, it did load everything in real quick and then here on the site context uh, panel you will see that depending on what I select it's just going to open up all of the streets and then this is street Dr. Uh, Agostina Neta and then if I select one of the buildings it actually has buildings by numbers and what you'll see here you have this whole eyeball icon so for example let's say that I, I have placed this building here and actually I want to have it here so I want my building to be here well I can select this existing building it's going to locate it here so that's building two. Uh, this one doesn't have a street number I guess and I can just click on the little eye eyeball icon and it's going to get rid of that uh, particular building so now I can move my building in that location and let's now do that let's place our building in the correct location and set up the correct orientation or by that I mean rotation so what I'm going to do here now is going to be just to go here to this little menu and then here we have edit site context and once you click on that you're going to get this little bar on the bottom uh, and now if I just start moving the context around as you can see it can go around and I can place it to the correct location uh, also I can switch from moving to rotation and then I can uh, I can rotate it here by using this little uh, slider. Now, actually, the rotation is almost spot on. So let's try seven or six degrees. I, I guess this works perfectly. And there we go. Now, uh, my building has been set up correctly. Uh, and then once you're happy with the positioning, uh, what you can do is you can just come in here and confirm the changes and it's going to bring the building back in. Uh, now, something that they've noticed is sometimes uh, the building doesn't fit in perfectly in terms of the uh, in terms of the elevation. Uh, so what you can do for that is, again, just go back here to edit site context and then you can go to the uh, Y parameter. And here, I just need to bring it a little bit down. So let's try like that. Okay, if I confirm the changes now, yeah, now the building is kind of perfectly fitting into our site context. And there we go. So I think this is really, really impressive. The fact that we can have kind of a, a very large site uh, like this all loaded and everything looks really, really good. So, uh, and it, it has been generated really quickly. And of course you can turn things off if you don't want. For example, let's say that because of our project, I want to demolish this house as well. Well, I can just click turn off that eyeball and I can turn that off and of course you can do the same thing for roads so if you don't want to have any of these roads uh, you can come in there and then you can uh, turn that off as well if you want I don't want to so I'm just going to uh, leave it as is and there we go now we have a site now, another really useful uh, new feature is the option to pin on top, so to speak. So what that means is when you're working in Enscape, uh, it's, it can be really kind of uh, annoying where you have to go back and forth Revit and Enscape or any other software in Enscape that you're using uh, and just going back and forth, bringing it up, putting it back. So uh, you can find that annoying. And if you don't have uh, two monitors, two screens, especially if you're working on a laptop, uh, that can give you some issues. Now with this uh, latest version, you can just go here to the settings and then go to preferences and then you have the pin Enscape window on top of the host application. So once you check this on and you close it, then if I just uh, perhaps make this a bit smaller, there we go, I can now have Enscape uh, kind of over Revit and then I can just continue working uh, in Revit here uh, and, and looking at Enscape simultane simultaneously. Now speaking of working both in Revit and Enscape uh, at the same time you can see that the views are perfectly synced and when I make changes to this particular view in Revit it will be 
kind of followed in Enscape. So we have the option to synchronize uh, views uh, and then here you can specify the views that are synchronized and uh, when you have live updates it's just going to follow. So this is a big improvement for uh, just kind of Revit users where we do have this option of kind of syncing views, uh, perspective views and, and so on. Another new feature that you'll see, and that has to do with this uh, latest release, and that is education. So education is kind of the theme of this uh, new release. And if you go here to the asset library, uh, and if we just filter our assets by category, and uh, let's search for new assets. So we can uh, just go here to categories, we can go to new, and you will see here that we have a lot of these new educational assets. So if you're designing things like schools, something like that, some uh, education buildings, uh, and you're using Enscape, uh, these will help you out a lot just to make everything uh, look way more realistic. Now uh, let's uh, close off the asset library and I'm just going to go here to the visual settings. And if we go to output, what you'll see here uh, is that for the image, uh, we have the option to export um, uh, and then we have object ID, material ID, depth channel, and then something new that was added here is the alpha channel. Uh, now what this allows you to do is it, al uh, it allows you to export image and then the alpha channel will be just an additional image where it's going to be a black and white image. So everything that's gonna the model, it's going to be uh, in, uh, in in white. And then in in black, you're going to have the, uh, the background. So then you can use that as a mask inside of Photoshop in order to exchange uh, that for, for a different background. And then also for the file format, if you pick a PNG, which is a file format that allows for uh, transparency, you will have the apply alpha channel checkbox. So if you turn this on, uh, it will actually export an image without the background. So without the sky, and then you can go into Photoshop or any other kind of image editing software, and you can uh, add perhaps a different, uh, a different environment. Now let's take a look at the all new material override feature. So I'm back here in Revit. So what I'm going to do is I want to override, let's say the material for these interior walls. And let me just switch this quickly to a realistic so we can see the actual material on the on the walls. So this is just a kind of a gypsum wall board material that they have used, uh, particularly for these interior walls. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here to Enscape Material Editor. So it's just going to open up that uh, material editor. Here we go. And then here I'm just going to search for uh, that material. Let's see. So here we go. Gypsum wall board. So this is uh, the, the this is the material. So when I hover over the material, if I click on the little three dots here, you will see that they have the option to replace with Enscape material. So if I just click on this, it's going to open up the uh, uh, Enscape material library. And then here I can search for um, let's see what do we have for plaster for example so here we have this wavy plaster and let's say I, I find this interesting and I want to use this well I, well I can just select that material click on replace so it's now just going to be replacing that material it's going to take a few seconds there we go and now it has replaced that material and even if I zoom in here inside of Revit you will see that the walls are a little bit different but more importantly if we open up uh, and Escape. Oops, what's going on here? Okay, I think it's because of the because of the view. So let's find a different view. There we go. Uh, okay, so uh, now you will see that that material has been applied here on these walls. So there we go. That's how you can kind of easily exchange uh, materials for your uh, for your Revit walls or any. Revit materials, you can easily replace them uh, with this new feature. Uh, also, another really cool feature that, that they have seen uh, is the option where you have uh, now kind of double reflections. So when you have uh, a transparent uh, material, so let's say a, a window there, you might have uh, a reflection of another window 
and with this new release you will see also the reflection of what's reflected in that other window so to speak uh, so it's a reflection of a reflection of a reflection uh, so uh, i think it's it's really cool it doesn't it doesn't work with some graphics cards so um, uh, these graphics cards will uh, allow you to 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 see that kind of new feature uh, but i think it's a very large improvement in terms of kind of the, the realism and the realistic feel of the uh, of your renders and animations inside of Enscape. And there you go. So those are the new features that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, tell me in the comment section below this video, uh, what do you think about these new features? And uh, do you use Enscape? And would you like to see more Enscape tutorials on my channel? So thank you for watching. Uh, to check out Enscape to get it, just follow the link in the description, as I said, and also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.